It's the fourth most densely populated city in the world. The capital of a fast-growing economy, Delhi's population grows at the rate of 4% every year. To keep pace with the future, Delhi needs to stay on the move. This puts massive pressure on its road networks. A growing demand for innovative methods to better the public transport network had been a constant challenge for the city's administrators. Roads were already packed to maximum capacity, so a new mode of transport would be needed. Today, rising to the challenge, zipping through the nerves of the city and carrying more than 1.5 million passengers every day is the Delhi Metro. In India, governments at both the center and state are elected every five years. Differences in political mandates can result in mega projects in the public sector getting delayed or running out of funds. How did the Delhi Metro project steer clear of these hurdles? How did its leader, Sridharan, maintain consistent political support over so many years? It is not difficult provided you deliver what you promise. Suppose you fix a target date for commissioning a line, and if you are able to commission it on that date, credibility is automatically established. It is not difficult at all. But you should not promise them which we cannot deliver. I, I, we don't promise the government what we cannot deliver. Similarly, we don't tell the public what we can't deliver on time. This basic principle is harder to follow. Given that the project spanned more than four government tenures, DMRC needed to ensure that a change in political power would not affect the project financially. Two very stringent measures were taken while setting up DMRC. One, it was designed to be an autonomous organization under the leadership of Mr. E. Sridharan. And two, the center and the state governments were made equal stakeholders, even though most of the funding came from the Japan International Cooperation Agency. Equal ownership by the governments ensured political support. People vote for a government which they expect will deliver what their requirements and their needs are. Housing is their need or you know, employment is their need or uh, having a good square meal is their need. Transportation is their need. Uh, communication is their need. Schooling is their need. Health is their need. So if they find that, then they re-elect a government, otherwise they can just about five years later, they can just chuck it out. DMRC began construction of the Metro Rail in 1998. Realizing that 90% of their work was to be executed by contractors, a unique tender management process was introduced to maintain adherence to deadlines and budgets. The whole tender process, our philosophy is that unless the contractor succeeds, we don't succeed. So the whole tender document is framed, aimed at making the contractor really succeed on the field. So we ensure that the proper type of contractor only is able to back the order quality and commitment of contractors was closely monitored by JICA, which was a major stakeholder in building the Delhi Metro. Once we sign a loan agreement, uh, we do monitor the project uh, very closely, particularly the bidding process, and we have our set of guidelines or rules that we would like the, uh, the Indian side the executing agencies to follow. Uh, and we have very detailed rules of how these biddings can be done. So if you want to say conditionality, that might be one aspect. Other than that, it's the project ownership resides with the Indian side. Uh, and we try to uh, promote the project ownership uh, as much as we can. I open for the technical bits. Evaluate them. Whosoever meets my requirement, only his financial statement, uh, financial package I will open. And whosoever is the lowest, I give it. It is conventionally different because what government does, most of the countries, 
they open technical and financial packages together. So, what happens whosoever has quoted a lowest price, no you cannot avoid, you start compromises on his, compromising on his technical specification. However, once the contractors were on board, they were treated as partners. Mr. Sridharan and his team worked hand in hand with the contractors in resolving even the smallest of issues and extending their support all the way. Say for example, if, if it is written in the contract that the permission to block the road or divert the traffic will be taken by the contractor. It's normally the provision in the contract. But we know that unless we interact with our counterparts in Delhi police, they will not permit him. So if we want contractually, we can say, okay, it is your problem, uh, contractor's uh, problem and uh, you have to bring the permission and we don't care. But we don't have that attitude. We know that uh, those provisions in the contract are for other purpose, are for the purpose that contractors should not make claim later on on those accounts and all that. The main thing in a tender management is timely payment to the contractors. We have a unique system here where a contractor decides when he wants the bill. He prepares the bill himself and he submits the bill. And once he submits the bill, 80% of the bill amount is paid in 24 hours to him. You see, so the cash flow is very assured to him. He knows that when he can get the money. Confident of financial security, the contractors and labourers focused on ensuring that the Delhi Metro was commissioned on time. Delays were frowned upon at DMRC. In order to stay on track, they intervened with utility agencies on behalf of the contractors. Smooth construction work required shifting and diverting utilities with minimal inconvenience. In a city like Delhi, which has a multiplicity of authorities, permissions and paperwork could take years to move. Having the state government as an equal stakeholder paid off, since it meant that civic agencies were also stakeholders in the metro dream. When we asked the Delhi Municipal Corporation and other utility agencies that we need to shift the utilities, they said, they said that they have a very set procedure. You have to first make a request to them. They will prepare an estimate and you will deposit the money. They will fix up the agency for doing the work and uh, then they will do the work for us. We said, no, this will not suit us. Our machines and equipments, they cannot be kept idle and wait for your utility diversion. Then we proposed that we will take up this diversion work. After initial deliberations, the agencies agreed to hand over management of the utility diversions to DMRC through their own contractors to expedite the process. Whenever there was any question of realignment of our water lines or sewer lines, meetings took place and uh, at the, at the uh, level of the engineering uh, you know, uh, wing where uh, uh, decisions were taken and very quickly put through. To realign lines means you have to take a shutdown in that area, you have to disrupt the water supply, you have to cause inconvenience to people. So the fact that so many times this was done and you know, still people uh, in Delhi uh, you know, take a lot of pride in the Delhi Metro. I think speaks for itself, speaks for the way the whole issue was handled. Delhi has total of uh, more than 6 million vehicles, 6.5 million vehicles registered. Quite a few are uh, two-wheelers, but cars and buses and trucks included. Road space is quite precious and quite limited. And all these projects mean taking away that vital road space. Or maybe if uh, more space is required, then making a street one way instead of two ways. So that uh, puts additional burden on, uh, on the road and consequently on traffic police. They had their own marshals to help the traffic staff because we didn't have the enough, enough sanction manpower. And uh, they would uh, work whenever permission was granted, mostly at night. And in the morning, before the work stopped, they'll clean up the entire area, wash the road. So that way we had full cooperation from them. DMRC's core ethos of quick decision-making and partnering in project implementation has changed the archaic procedures of interdepartmental cooperation in the larger interests of the community. DMRC is on track with its expansion plan and aims to grow larger than the London Tube. 
Being in the socio-economic sector, DMRC brings maximum benefits to the people with minimum financial burden. You see, all metros in the world generally make loss because it's very capital intensive. We have taken a huge loan from Japan and your passenger fares, you cannot raise them to a very high level. In Delhi Metro has the cheapest fare in the world except for Calcutta Metro. So how do you raise your money? We wanted to be profitable. We did not want to be a burden on the government. We did not want to take a subsidy from the government. As a result of which, we went in for property development on the Hong Kong model. Initially 30%, today about 20 to 25% of our revenue comes from property development, which means commercial exploitation of space available. Through better engineering, we were able to do various things. Build shops, build malls. We have built an IT park. We are even thinking of building a hotel. You can't depend only on your fare box collection. It has to be a very essential part if you want to be a successful business model. The financial success of DMRC lies in its innovative planning and implementation. Making a social impact has always been at the core of its business innovations. With this project, uh, we, uh, up to now, have timely repayment uh, and we are very much confident uh, of the financial uh, uh, strengths of uh, this project that it will be, uh, we will not encounter any problems uh, in the repayment. The first phase of DMRC is slated to achieve the break-even point by 2011, well ahead of the earlier projection of 2013. All projects, this is the maximum amount of the loan, and it ne not necessarily be that the loan be fully utilized. If there can be savings, uh, then the loan amount, actual loan amount, can be smaller. And uh, in what terms are there savings? If the project is uh, done earlier than planned, then there's less inflation risk and, or less uh, cost escalation. Uh, and therefore, there can be some savings and some discount from there. High regard for deadlines and cost management keeps DMRC on track all the time. If the country has to progress, and we have to be in the forefront of advanced nations. Naturally, a lot of things have to change in this country. The main thing is the, the decision-making process. We have not still learned that decisions cannot wait. Decisions have to be taken and we should go forward fast. This has been the main success of Delhi Metro. DMRC's success in timely implementation of the Metro Rail system has proved that large-scale developmental projects in the public sector are not destined to fail. Rather, once there is recognition that sustained growth requires vision, a partnering approach to execution and stringent quality control during implementation, these can ensure that public sector projects can be completed on time and within budget.